Welcome to this next video, and here we're going to focus on setting up your chart of accounts. Job costing in QuickBooks can be simple, but a big part of that simplicity depends on how you've set up the chart of accounts. The more or the more confusing your chart of accounts is, the more difficult it's going to be to do job costing. So we'll focus on a simple setup that's accurate, that's useful, and that will help you boost your job costing. And we recommend you don't make any changes to your QuickBooks until you've watched all these videos the first time. Watch them through from start to finish. See how we set it up, see how information flows through the system, and see the reports that get out of it. Once you've seen the whole thing from A to Z, then go ahead and watch them again. This time, setting it up as you go, but set it up the way you want to set it up in your company. Once you've seen it from start to finish, you'll know how things go through, and you'll be much better tooled to set up the system so that it works for your requirements. So the purpose of this video is to help you create a useful profit and loss statement. By useful, we mean much more useful than just presenting it to a bank or finance department when you need a loan or to the government when it's time to pay your taxes. I want to make sure your profit and loss statement boosts your company performance by helping you estimate better, as well as enables you to do job costing, which will feed the profit and loss statements. The better your profit and loss statement, the better your job costing is going to be. Your profit and loss statement is also the foundation of all your numbers. So eventually everything was going to trickle through the system and, and flow down into your profit and loss statement. So again, the setup of it is critical. If we set this up wrong, everything along the way uh, is going to be either wrong or more complicated. We'll also make some simple assumptions. And it's a safe assumption to assume that most landscape companies don't have a P&L that really works for them. It may help you with your tax reporting, etc. It doesn't really give you the information you need to manage your company. Information could be in the wrong spots. It rarely helps with budgeting, planning, or forecasting. And in many cases, owners can't trust the results or don't even understand the results, not even sure what numbers are going in where or where things are showing up in the P&L. That type of P&L may very well work for your tax reporting, but doesn't do a lot for you as an owner to give you a window in your business as to what's happening and to help you make adjustments to be better. The best time to fix your P&L statement is at the end of a fiscal year. And while you can do it on the fly, it's a little more difficult as when you inactivate certain accounts, they're gonna sort of disappear. And I recommend that best time to do it is the end of your fiscal year or start of a new fiscal year. Now, that's not to say you can't do it on the fly, you can, but if you're gonna do that, definitely work with your bookkeeper or accountant to do that with you so that you understand where all your costs are gonna to go to or come from when you're looking at uh, old accounts that may be deactivated or new accounts that you're just gonna create. So some simple rules for setup. Don't overcomplicate your P&L. Your P&L, given that it's the foundation of all your numbers, the more complicated it is, the more complicated everything else gets. If you have a complex P&L, you're gonna have a very complex job costing system. Complex job costing systems don't tend to work because they offload a lot of that complexity into the field staff. And the field staff have their job to do, which is get the projects or contracts done in the field. They don't necessarily have the time, the resources, or even the background information to make sure that the information they're giving you is accurate for your job costing. And the more complicated your P&L is, the more you're going to have to rely on your field staff for really good field information. And we know what typically happens in that scenario. We don't get good information. The information goes into the system and it's inaccurate. And then you've got a complex system that is inaccurate. Nobody really trusts. And that's the worst combination of systems that you can build. There are two dead simple rules for setting up your profit and loss statement so that it means something, especially for estimating. Your estimated costs, and those are the costs that you actually build into your estimates. Examples would be wages for field staff, uh, possibly equipment, material costs, subcontractor costs, equipment rentals. All these are costs that you build into your estimates when you're pricing a job. These should be counted as cost of goods sold. The other type of costs are called operating costs or overhead costs. And those are the costs that you don't estimate into your jobs. Non-estimated costs, these are costs that you don't build into your estimates, will get set up as an expense account in QuickBooks, which is another way of saying overhead. Let's take a quick peek at what this might look like. Here's a sample company called Danscape and a sample 
four months of a profit and loss statement. Up here, Dan has broken down his income into a few basic scenarios. He's got under landscape installations, hardscape income, softscape income, and extras or enhancement income. He's also tracking his income from maintenance, from snow, and from irrigation. Slide down a little bit and we'll see Dan's cost of goods sold. So these are the direct costs of getting those sales done or the cost that Dan builds into his estimates when he prices that work. So we're looking at things like materials and he breaks it down by hardscape, softscape irrigation. We've got field payroll. So these are the wages that he pays his field staff. So not his office staff, but the staff that works in the field. He's got some equipment costs there, fuel and repairs for field equipment. He's got subcontracting expenses and he's got expenses for equipment rentals. All these are costs that we can build into an estimate when we price a job. This will give you your gross profit. Your gross profit is your sales minus the costs of that work that it took to get that work done. So gross profit is like sales minus cost of the job. Whatever's left after gross profit is what goes to overhead and eventually net profit. Overhead gets termed in QuickBooks as an expense. And these are the expenses that you don't count to your estimates or you don't build into your estimates. Advertising and promotion, for example. When you do an estimate, you're not counting advertising or promotion as a cost that you're building into your estimate. That's a cost to the company and one that you need to recover, but it's not something you're gonna put into an estimate that you're gonna be able to allocate specifically to one job. Same with bank service charges, computer expenses, meals and entertainment, office supplies, rent, office staff payroll, all these costs are types of costs that aren't directly estimated when you build an estimate. And so those are overhead costs. And so very simply, the key to your profit and loss being simple and useful would be to make sure that in your cost of goods sold section, you have all the costs that you work into your estimates. And in the expense section, you have all your costs that you don't work into your estimates. That way you'll know exactly what your overhead is and that'll help you create the right overhead recovery factors when you're doing your estimating. Bottom line here is your net income and your net income is your sales minus your cost of goods sold minus your overhead costs. That's what's left over as company profit. One key point here is to keep things very simple. The more chart of accounts you have, the more complex your job costing is going to get. It also affects payroll and other things. Everything sort of builds on that complexity. It's really critical you keep your profit and loss as simple as you can. You want it useful, but you do want to keep it simple. Here's an example. Now, in order to pay employees correctly in QuickBooks, you need to set up a payroll item. Many companies decide, well, I want to track my payroll by installation, and I want to see my payroll for maintenance, and I want to pay, see my payroll for snow or irrigation all separately. And that's all well and good and, and is advisable, but you don't necessarily need to set up payroll accounts for each of those. Watch how this creates a lot of complexity. Many companies would like to know exactly what they spend on wages for their installation division or their maintenance division or their snow division so that you can pull the wages for each type of work specifically. And that's good and we should set this up, but you don't necessarily need to do that in your chart of accounts. It will create a lot of complexity. For example, the way QuickBooks works, you pay your employees with payroll items. So items are what tell QuickBooks what wage to pay the employee for the hours worked. However, an item can only link to one payroll account. So for each payroll account you'd have, you'd need at least two payroll items to make sure employees get paid A, the correct wage, and make sure the cost of that wage go to the correct payroll account. Here's what it looks like in QuickBooks. A QuickBooks payroll item, in this case, you can see at the top of my screen, it says field wages hourly. I'm telling this payroll item to end up in an account called 54,000 payroll field and a sub account underneath that payroll field for installation and irrigation work. The reason why you wanna keep this simple is especially noticeable once you start adding employees to this mix. So let's say I've got three employees here, Sam, Bob, and Rick. Now, if they each only work in one division, that's not so complicated. But if Bob ever goes and does work in the maintenance division as a favor, or he plows snow in the winter, we're gonna have to set him up not only with the wages 
for his items on installation work, but also wages on the items of any other kinds of work that Bob does. Even if we pay him the same rate of pay, we need to make sure that that pay gets dumped into the correct chart of accounts. And now we're getting into a complicated system where Bob now needs six payroll items or wage settings in his employee file just to make sure that when you pay him for the different types of work, it goes into the right account. Now when you add three, four, five, six employees into this mix, you start seeing how complicated this gets as each employee needs a payroll item for each different type of work they do. We can definitely get reporting for installation versus maintenance versus snow versus whatever services you have without necessarily setting up chart of accounts for each. You can create, for example, one payroll account for your field staff underneath your cost of goods sold. Then we can use service items to break that pay up by installation, maintenance, snow, etc. It keeps things much simpler and it doesn't convolute your employees and your payroll items and add all that complexity to the system. So I'd suggest you start with two payroll accounts. One up in the cost of goods sold section for your field staff. Another down in the overhead section for your overhead staff. And then if you want to track your field staff by what kind of work they're doing or what division they're working into, stay tuned. We'll cover that in the service items section when we get into setting that up. Before you're done with your chart of accounts, have a look through them and double check them and especially double check them with somebody who does estimates. Make sure that your cost of goods sold represent the cost that you build into your estimates and that your expenses or your overhead are all the costs that you don't track or you don't build into your estimates. If you keep that distinction clear, anything we estimate goes in cost of goods sold, anything we don't estimate goes into overhead you'll have a great picture of exactly what your costs of jobs are and what your cost of overhead is and that'll not only help your job costing a ton it will also help your estimating it'll make sure that you come up with the right price for your jobs including the right amount of overhead and profit